Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to Learning Game Development. In this section we're going to talk about objects inside our game. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every video in this series and everything else I upload on video game development on my channel. Loads to see, loads to learn and loads to do. Let's get on with it. So, objects are the foundation of creating a game within any game uh, development engine, not just Unity, whether it's Unreal or CryEngine or anything. Objects are always important. Now, they are primitive in terms of what they can be used for. So, for example, in Unity, we can have things like a cube. We can have things like a sphere, uh, all that kind of thing. So if we go to game object, we can actually select either 2D or 3D objects. And as we're in a 3D render engine at the moment, we're just going to go for a 3D object. And essentially, every single object works the same kind of way, whether it is a cylinder, whether it's a sphere, whether it's a cube. Um, so let's just start with the most basic of basics, a cube. Now, the reason I always like to do this, just scrolling my mouse in there so we can see it closer, panning around so we can see. The reason I go with a cube is because it is, like I say, the most primitive object. It's the most basic thing that we can play with, but they're also incredibly versatile and can be used for various different things. So, for example, we could quite easily use a cube as a floor, as a wall, as a ceiling, as a collectible, as a container to hold a model inside. They are so useful in every sense of the word. So this cube, for example, we could change the position of where we wanted it. Let's have it center of our scene. And center of the scene is always going to be at position 0, 0, 0. So let's do that. 0, 0, 0. And you'll notice that it has disappeared. Hence the reason why I zoomed in, because I wanted it to disappear. And if we want to quickly find it, we can actually double click on that item in the hierarchy. And there it is. And let's zoom out so we can see it. And let's move around and pan around so we can see it down here. So you can see that the lighting is having an impact because we can see it slightly darker here. And again, this all comes down to object placement and how things look and their rotation, their position, their size, all kinds of things. So objects are vital to creating anything inside a game engine. For example, if we were to change the rotation of this cube now, so let's change it on the Y, hold down the left mouse button and change it, we can see that the sides of that cube changes depending on how this light is shining. If we were to change the rotation of the light, you can see it changing as well. So the quicker I do it, we can see how quickly it changes, particularly on this side. But if we do it on the X, we can see just how much it changes otherwise. So, like I say, position, rotation and size of objects are massively important. I really cannot stress that enough. So going further into objects, if we go to game object again and go to 3D objects and choose something like a plane. A plane is a flat object and we can see here if we zoom out we can no longer see the cube. However, if we pan ourselves down we can no longer see the underside of the plane. Now you'll notice this a lot in various different types of games, particularly ones that are open world or kind of closed off that you never get to see one side of an object. So it could be a building in a, for example, a driving game. You never get to see the other side of the building. So those sides are never physically made. It's only the bits you see that essentially are made and are textured. So what are textures and materials? Well, these can be applied to objects to make them look different, colorful, actually useful. So if I move the um, plane just there, so we have the cube sat on top, we can theoretically create a color to place on these. So if we go down here to our project window, if we right click, go to create, and there are a lot of things here. Uh, don't worry about these. Obviously, this is a simple series to get you into game development. And I do have plenty of other tutorials that you can understand a lot more of this stuff on. Uh, but we essentially just need to create a material, which you can find roughly in the middle of the list in pretty much any version. Um, so we can call this red. And what we'll do here is we'll create a simple red colored material. 
So if we select the color just here, we can select from the wheel the type of color we want. So we now have it red. And we can add that material to our objects. Now, if we drag and drop this onto our scene, it will kind of temporarily apply it to anything it crosses over. So don't worry too much if things go a little bit astray. What I mean by that is if we drag this material and place it there, you'll see that that's changed. But I've not let go of my left mouse button. So we could see what it looks like until we drop it on there. So let's drop it on the cube. And there we go. That cube is now red. So let's say we want to have a green or dark green kind of plane beneath it. We can do the same sort of thing, or we could actually duplicate this red. So if we hold control and press D on our keyboard, it will duplicate that material. And it's not just materials that you can duplicate. You can duplicate anything, whether it is uh, an asset down here or whether it is indeed an object up here. So you can see I've just duplicated that cube. It's a very useful thing to have when you're creating games. And when it comes to your very first game, it's always best to stick with these kind of objects, primitive, simple, and gain the understanding that you need to create something bigger and better. Let's rename this. So let's rename red to green. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to apply this material to our plane here. And then we're going to change it real time. So we can change the color right here. And as we change it, you can see that it is changing in our scene itself. There are many other settings that we could have on materials. Uh, we could change it to be a bit more metallic, a bit smoother, not so smooth. I guess it just depends how you want it to look. Now with textures, you can apply an image to the albedo just here, and it will texture whatever object the material is attached to. So if we add in a bit of a camo texture, it would add that camo te texture to every face of the object. Uh, we're not gonna do that at this point because realistically there's no point delving too far into this. We just need to understand how objects work and how we can use them, move them around, uh, and manipulate them in all kinds of different ways. So like the rotation, we could have like that. Uh, we could have that like that. And if we put it in there, it is going to float inside the air itself, even in the play mode. But again, that's something that we can work with a little later on. So going a little bit further, there are different objects that we can have. Like I say, there's 2D, there's effects, there is light. Uh, audio, all kinds of different things. So as one more quick example of something that isn't quite so primitive as a cube or a sphere or anything is a particle system. And you can see if I select it, we can see things moving in our scene now. And a particle system is a great way of creating effects, something like a fire or a spell that would occur. And there are a lot of things to go through here. But as I say, I cover a lot of this on my channel in different tutorials anyway. So if you already know what kind of game you want to create, whether it's a racing game, a first-person shooter, driving game, uh, a really fast driving game, uh, an RPG, anything like that, you can find them on my channel anyway. But if you want to learn a little bit more, then I will see you in the next part, which is going to be about cameras and what they're useful for, how you can use them, and just how great they actually are when it comes to development. Hopefully I will see you then. Thanks very much for watching, guys.